Its structure is in the Constitution, but is not applicable. Just to clarify what does that mean, it sounds like a contradiction. Um, the next clarification I seek, uh, perhaps from Mr. Karori um, and those who uh, represented the President regarding his role in popular initiative. If he's entitled to do so, why did he pass the baton to the promoters to finish the race? He would have gone all the way to the finishing line. Number three, for I think the council who represented the Speaker of the Senate and the Senate, and uh, I think Council Morara on the referendum question. My reading of the opinion of the Court of Appeal, Lady Justice Nambuye, Lady Justice Okwengu, and Mr. Justice Kiyagi appears to me to have been unanimous that you must have separate and distinct referendum question or questions. Mr. Justice Gatembo seems to me also to have agreed with that position, saying that he qualified it by saying, depending on the nature of the proposed amendment. Lady Justice Ichale uh, did not express her opinion on this question. Mr. Justice Tuyot said the issue was not ripe. So therefore, if you look at the opinions of the judges, it would appear that the majority agreed with the High Court that you need distinct question or questions. And therefore, in my view, and you, I'm asking a question, if you look at the, the disposition, the final disposition on this matter, the court said they set aside the declaration by the High Court um, regarding uh, the referendum question. So who are the majority? The majority, in my view, upheld the High Court. So if, if counsel involved in this can confirm that I'm right or wrong, then I'll be satisfied. The final one, really, um, I, I don't know if there's a question. IEBC uh, didn't seem to have addressed us, or I can't see in their submissions, uh, the issue of the limitation of uh, boundaries of the 70 constituencies. And yet I thought um, this really is directly on their role. As so I don't know whether it was tact um, or it was strategic, but perhaps the Council uh, for IBC can tell us whether they have really no view at all regarding the second schedule. I thank you, uh, Judge President. Thank you, Judge Renard. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Council, for your submissions. Um, Judge Oko has picked on two of the issues I want a clarification on, but I have three others. The first is to the eloquent Dr. Eboso. Dr. Eboso, you made a very interesting submission that sovereignty is extra-constitutional, that it is not reposited in the Constitution, and that for that reason, the basic structure is implied and not expressed. And my question is, um, where then do we get this sovereignty reposited at? Is it fluid? Is it misty? Where do we grab it? Where do we locate it? I'm asking this question because you also made reference to the Kesavananda case. In that case, at paragraph 368, the court said, therefore, 
if any part of the Constitution was intended to be excluded from the operation of the power to amend, it would, norm have, it would normally have found a place in or below Article 368, which is the amendment provision in the Indian Constitution. The court also said, then again, we find that when the people through the Constitutional Assembly granted the power to amend, they made no reservation in favor of the people. The people completely withdrew from the process of amendment. So that if it is true, as you said, and Aluachir also said the same, that the people are sovereign, yet you are saying that sovereignty is extra-constitutional, what are you telling us? I need to understand that. The second question is to Mr. Kirago Kimani uh, on the powers of the president to initiate a popular initiative. The question is, is there precedent elsewhere uh, in your research where a president has initiated a popular initiative in a constitution similar to ours? And following Judge Oko's question, therefore, how far should he have gone? And, and if, if not, what is the issue there? And, and, and in, tied to that, there was controversy right through from the High Court, whether the President of Kenya in fact initiated this popular initiative. Are you admitting that he did? Or what is your position regarding the particular event? Did President Huru Kenyatta initiate this popular initiative or another entity post his own actions initiated the popular initiative? Um, and to, 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 to Isaac Kaluochi, um, again, thank you for your submissions. One of the issues that came through the Court of Appeal decisions was the finding by one judge that, in fact, the question whether we should have multiple or single, a singular question uh, in the amendment bill was premature because the IBC, which is the body that is mandated to do certain things, had not reached the level at which it crafted uh, any referendum bill. Are you then submitting that, in fact, uh, Justice Tuyot, I believe, was correct in saying that the issue was premature, or are you, Isaac Aluocher, saying we, as this court, should proceed and make a determination on the, thing, on the question whether, upon reaching the level of the referendum, the amendment bill, in your view, should have one question or not. So my question is the prematurity or not of the amendment bill. I thank you, CJ. Thank you, CJ. Thank you um, for all counsel who have submitted uh, thus far. I have a question uh, to Mr. Alochie. Um, You've been very clear that um, it is the preserve of parliament to legislate. And indeed, um, it is your position that the judges, therefore, in the High Court ought not to have read into the Constitution anything that is not in the Constitution. Yet, on the other hand, you've suggested to us that um, the bill that goes uh, to the referendum ought to be in the format of separate bills, each having a different question. Looking at the Constitution on bills, Articles 109 to 114, uh, from 255 to 257, there is no such detail. There is no such prescription of how the bill ought to look like. So I'm just ask, are you asking us, as a court, who ought not to legislate, to put in that prescription, or are you asking us perhaps, are you suggesting to us that it is parliament that ought to put that prescription into, uh, on the issue of the bills? That's the first one. Secondly, you're very clear that the constitution does not allow the president to use state machinery under Article 2.2. If you look at the presidential functions, uh, could it be possible, is there a possibility, that the president in exercising the functions given to him by the Constitution can indeed move amendments to the Constitution in order to achieve 
the functions given to him under the bill, like uh, the unity to unify the country, or any of the different aspects of his functions. In that situation, what would your position be? Uh, my other question then would go to Dr. Eboso. You talked a lot about the promoters of the, uh, the uh, amendments and how it should be an ordinary Kenyan who can go and look for the million signatures and start the process. Would, in your opinion, these promoters be restricted in eliciting support from politicians, from the president, from any other Kenyan? How, in practical terms, would you see the promoters moving to meet the requirements uh, be, to, 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 to collect the signatures and to process uh, all the issues required up to referendum. And also to you, uh, Dr. Eboso, do you, what do you think of a proposition that the president himself can initiate legislation? And does he do this? How, do, does, how do, does government policy become legislation? Does the president initiate legislation? And if he does so, is it a possibility that then he could initiate the legislation that is the bill uh, that would then accumulate in the referendum? Finally, uh, this is not restricted to any party. I would just like to hear from any party that thinks that they may be able to answer this about the four sequential steps. Are they expressly provided for in the Constitution? Are they implied and where? That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Justice Wanjara. Let me also join my colleagues in uh, thanking Council for your very elaborate uh, submissions on, on the questions before us. Uh, there is, uh, this is directed to uh, Mr. Karori and to a certain extent Mr. Oraro and also Gilbert. If I understood you, if I understood your argument correctly, you did submit to the effect that uh, a popular initiative kicks in, a, co a popular initiative process kicks in uh, after the collection of signatures, if I understood you correctly. Now, if that be the case, if that be your submission, what is the basis of this argument? Because then you would have to tell us what is a popular initiative? What makes an initiative? popular within the context of uh, this provision, I think Article 257. So wh wh why would you say that uh, the process then kicks in only after the collection of, of, of signatures? And then uh, the next question, it touches again partly on what my uh, brother uh, Jayoko asked regarding the basic structure, and this has detained the courts right from the High Court now up to the Supreme Court. Again, if I understood your submission correctly, again, this again goes to the three counsel. Uh, you are saying that when you look at our Constitution, you can see a basic structure. In Article 255, that therein is a basic structure. What, what is inspiring that characterization? Why is it a basic structure? Why are you saying that the specific provisions to which you are referred, you have referred, actually constitute a basic structure? Then, by the same token, you argue fairly strongly that although that be the case, the basic structure doctrine uh, 
I think as understood from uh, the Kesevananda case, is not applicable uh, in Kenya. Why is it not applicable? How would, what predates what? What inspires? Is, is it the doctrine from which your basic structure, as you have identified it, derives? Or is it vice versa? Or is the basic structure, as you identify it, in our constitution, something that falls beyond the doctrinal aspects of what we are dealing with here? And therefore, that doctrine is not uh, applicable. So those are the two questions. Because there seems to be, there could be a contradiction, but if you clarify, there may very well not be a contradiction. Why do we locate a basic structure in our constitution? And why do we, in the same vein, submit that the doctrine of the basic structure, the basic structure doctrine, however you call it, is not applicable in our constitutional setup? And Mr. Aluachiri, you may wish also to chip in, because your argument was not on all fours with the three council, but you did also say that the basic structure doctrine, as you understand it, is not applicable uh, in our constitutional architecture. Thank you, CJ. Um, I would also like to seek a small clarification, just a little trajectory on this issue of the popular initiative. Um, I think Justice Wanjara has asked when the process began. The clarification I seek is that there were processes that ran to the setting up of the EBI task force and the steering committee, um, as well as the fact that members and staff therein drew remuneration from public funds. And then the, therein is the question of whether because of that, can this qualify to be a popular or people-driven initiative? That will be answered, I think, by Council for the AG. Uh, the second clarification on my part is on the public participation. So far, since the Constitution 2010, we have been guided by weighing whether there was public participation on a case-by-case -case basis. The matter that is before us, the matters of uh, Chapter 16 of the Constitution, looking at the complexity, our history, I would like uh, uh, you know, some information on how uh, public participation can be undertaken in this regard. Would there be necessary for there to be put a legal framework or some rules or procedure uh, to, 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 you know, to, to that effect? That is what I would like to ask also from uh, council from INDC who submitted on uh, public participation. We'll give three minutes to each to respond. Each of the parties who have been asked to respond, please take about three minutes. 